everyone and welcome back to Art a la carte. In this video I'm going to do two different things. One, I want to show you how to draw a orca whale and two, I'm going to challenge myself in the coloring process of this. So it's kind of a tutorial slash challenge video. So let's get started. The first step is to begin to block in the shapes. And again, if you guys watch any of my videos, you know I'm a big stickler for using reference photos, especially if it's something you haven't drawn a lot of. The problem I always had drawing orca whales is I always made their heads way bigger than I should have. So I'm going to start with a small circle for the head and then begin to bring in the body shape, which I tried to think of a shape that would describe it. And the best idea I could have is an orca body shape. <laughs> So it's kind of a curved upper line and a curved underline and also depending if the tails up or the tails down or what all that it just Yeah, it just depends. So reference photos Looking a little bit closer into the face of the orca The mouth kind of comes into just a little bit of a point not super super pointy You know like it's coming out in this big long snout, but it's definitely not flat like a beluga So again reference photos. Why am I doing the that's just weird. Okay. Another tip for drawing is to use a pencil that you can erase. I see a lot of people drawing with ink pens and that's great for building confidence in your line. I'm not discouraging that, but if you are trying to really practice something and want to work with it, using a pencil is nice because um, you can go back in and fix those little details. Also, the pressure that you use on your pencil is really important. So with my pencil, you'll see that I'm using a really, really light pressure so it's easy to erase. For those of you guys who are asking, I'm using a cool erase color pencil. I'll put a link to where I buy mine on Amazon in the description box below. If you want to pick some up for yourself, they come in a wide variety of colors. The next part I'm going to put in is the two front fins and they probably have a technical name, but at this moment I can't remember what they are. Best placement I can figure is that the fin on the back is going to go halfway from the nose to the tail and then the side fins are a little bit halfway between the dorsal fin to the nose is going to be where they are. So as you get to working on the back part of the fin, the body is going to taper up, but don't have it come to a point before it goes to the fin because there's a lot of muscle back in there. So it does taper down a little bit, but not to just nothing. And then adding in the back fin, I usually put in a large uh, triangle shape in there, etch in the details of the fin around that. But putting that shape in there kind of helps me to get the right, the right dimension first. Don't be afraid to erase something if it doesn't look good. A lot of people, when they erase, it's their aggression and frustration come out. I try not to let that happen because then you forget what you're doing and you'll almost always tend to draw the exact same line. And I don't know why that is we do that. So when you erase, just take a deep breath, erase it, or sometimes I'll even draw the correct line first and then erase and clean up the other lines around it. Cause that'll help me not to redraw the same exact line. After you have the finished outlining sketch of the whale, then this is the point where you just kind of begin to look at it, that everything's in the place that you want it to be. And now we can begin adding in the detail. Now I'm not going to add the detail in really darkly because of the challenge part of this video, but there are some places that you would add the patching. So there's the white patch over the eye, and then there's the underside white part of the orca whale. And each orca whale has a slightly different pattern, allows us a little bit more freedom and creativity in the designing of this pattern. But now we're coming to the part where I am going to do the challenge part. Now I've drawn this on some Copic paper and I want to try to create a galaxy effect using Copic markers. This is pretty easy to do in watercolor. Um, I've done it several times with that. I've even done it with colored pencil before, but I've never tried it with Copic and I wanted to see if I could achieve that. But before I begin that, I'm going to make a quick change because I decided that my side fins were a little bit too close up. So you'll see that now they really are kind of halfway between that dorsal fin and that and the tip of their nose. I moved them back a little bit. And again, that's all about being precise with your drawing and not just settling if you're not happy with it. I use pretty hard pressure on that part so you can see the lining under here. Once I add the Copic markers and finish this piece, you won't even notice it, but uh, you can see that my pressure was a little bit too dark. So for this next part, I'm going to just speed it up and it's really not tutorial based at all, um, simply because I have no clue what I'm doing. I don't know if this is going to work. Basically, my method was just add a bunch of colors and blend like crazy and 
see what happens. <laughs> so that's what I did. I added blues and some purples, greens, pinks, darker colors, yellows, and just blended. And for a little while, it looked like this beautiful cloud in the sky. And I thought, well, maybe I'll just stick with that. Maybe I'll, instead of doing a galaxy whale, I will attempt to do a cloud whale and no one will ever know. Like right here, it just was so pretty. I almost didn't want to change it to a galaxy, but I knew I could do this. So I just kept getting it darker and darker and darker and darker. And I did like the effect that I finally ended up with, but it wasn't exactly what I was hoping for. So I did go back in with some uh, color pencils and just add in, pull out some more highlights with that. So it's kind of turned into a bit of a mixed media piece. And then of course I went through and colored in all around the whale using black. And I went back in with my Uniball gel pen and added in stars. The Uniball gel pen is probably my favorite gel pen. I love that one. I've tried jelly rolls. I mean, they're fun, but uh, I really, really like the Uniball. And uh, if you're interested in it, I'll put a link to where you can get that on Amazon as well in the description. A quick tip to actually placing in stars and things like that is to don't put them in a uniform pattern. Space them out a little bit here and there. Um, think about how stars look in the sky with the different constellations and try to do that. And then again, just for the final last minute touch-ups, I added a few colored pencils to kind of help pop some things out and some, and then a little bit of a black colored pencil just to push in a few dark spots that I wanted a really soft touch to. But all in all, this was a fun piece. It was fun to draw the whale and then it was fun to kind of push myself in this challenge to create a galaxy whale. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And by sharing these videos with your friends on social media, it really helps other people find this channel, which in turn helps me out a ton. So thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. And until next time, God bless you guys, and we'll see you later. Bye-bye. Pencil and some paper and the best 